Hi, and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to explain why multicellular plants need a specialised transport system. You should then be able to describe what's meant by dicotyledonous herbaceous plants. I'm showing you here a single celled algae. Now, this algae takes in carbon dioxide and water and carries out photosynthesis. And because it has a very large surface area to volume ratio, it can rely on diffusion for the transport of molecules. I'm showing you here two multicellular plants. On the left, we have a geranium, which is often found in gardens in the UK. And on the right, we have an oak tree. Now, as you can see, multicellular plants are large, and in the case of trees, they're very large. Also, multicellular plants have a low surface area to volume ratio. So, for these reasons, multicellular plants cannot rely on diffusion alone for the transport of molecules. Now, the green parts of multicellular plants can carry out photosynthesis, producing oxygen and the carbohydrate glucose. The glucose and oxygen can then be used in aerobic respiration. However, many parts of multicellular plants cannot carry out photosynthesis, for example, tissues in the roots. Now, the cells in root tissue absorb mineral ions by active transport, and because of this, they have a high rate of metabolic reactions, including aerobic respiration. So, due to their high metabolic rate, sugars must be transported to these tissues. OK, now, multicellular plants need to transport other molecules as well. For example, mineral ions are transported from the roots to other parts of the plant. A good example is the nitrate ion, which is used by plants to make amino acids. Plants can also transport hormones from where they're synthesised to their target tissues. Now, over the next few videos, we're going to be looking at the transport systems in herbaceous dicotyledonous plants. So let's take a look at what that means. I'm showing you here two germinating seeds. Now, seeds contain an embryonic leaf called a cotyledon. When a seed germinates, the cotyledon unfurls, allowing the seedling to carry out photosynthesis. Some plants only have one cotyledon, for example, grasses. Scientists call these monocotyledonous plants. Other plants have two cotyledons, for example, trees. And scientists call these dicotyledonous plants. Now, the transport systems in these two types of plants are arranged differently. And you're only required to know about dicotyledonous plants. I'm showing you again the geranium and the oak tree. Both of these are examples of dicotyledonous plants. Now, trees are examples of woody dicotyledonous plants. Other woody dicotyledonous plants include shrubs. These plants are long-lived and have a woody stem. In contrast, geraniums are examples of herbaceous dicotyledonous plants. And in fact, this category includes a large number of different plants. Herbaceous plants are often fast-growing and can be short-lived. And unlike woody plants, herbaceous plants do not have a woody stem. So we're going to be exploring the transport systems in herbaceous dicotyledonous plants. In the next video, we're going to look at what's meant by the vascular bundle. 